I'm Captain Doug Toback. I run and own the boat uh, Corazon, Cars from Corazon Fishing. And today we're here to talk about trophy fluke fishing. Now the thing uh, to note is the clip that you guys just saw is our fish that we just caught in 2022. It's not like the, the best fish in our life, right? So that is, is the type of fishing that we're experiencing. The fishing is off the hook, no matter what type of fishing that you're doing, we're seeing some amazing fishing. Now, um, just to give you my creds, and I'll go through it quickly, I've been, I don't know, fishing for a lot of years, let's say 45. I've been chartering for, I don't know, over 25. I'm running a 35 foot Duffy right now that we just redid. We've been running that boat for two years. We took that thing down to the studs. I have some pictures on that in a little, in a, in a little bit. Um, I'm a 100 ton master, uh, master captain. And um, we fish, you know, basically we've been fishing from New Jersey all the way to Rhode Island. Right, we're not, you know, for, we're talking about fluke fishing. The great news about fluke fishing is you don't need to go from New Jersey to Rhode Island to find the best fishing. So, um, just so I can dial in what we're gonna share with each other, I just wanna quickly understand where everybody's from. Um, so, who here is from the Western South Shore? And what I mean by Western South Shore is Fire Island to the West, just by a show of hands. Awesome, I don't even have to, uh, uh, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, where are you from? Did you, uh, you raise your hand too? Okay, cool. All right, awesome. This is gonna be easy, all right? So we're all gonna talk about fishing in, in, uh, in my home turf. So uh, that'll, be, uh, that'll be good, all right? So just full disclosure, all right, and in a good way, I'm pro staff for Simrad, Daiwa, Tony Maja, and actually my fluke, um, my fluke components, I use M3. Right, so you'll hear me refer to those guys. The thing that we're pro staff on now, we actually used the products before we went pro staff with them. Right, so I've been using Simrad for 20 years, Daiwa we've been using forever, Maja we've been using forever, and M3 we've been using them also. Um, great. So, fluke fishing is awesome right it is a lot a lot of fun so what makes fluke fishing and you got to think about why fluke fishing is good because that's the way to catch doormats right you have to really appreciate what fluke fishing is about so what makes fluke fishing great all right thing number one is that they're easy to catch i'm putting that in quotations right they're easy to catch you can go out with a really you know with kids on a really casual day and catch fish. May not be doormats, but you're catching fish. When we're, you know, when we're getting them, it's in the summer, right? It's not like we're we're toughing it out, man. Like we have in some vast days or offshore days, or whatever, where it's it's like, oh my gosh, why? Like I really am doing this instead of a lot of other things. Um, so it's not, you know, the weather the weather is really nice. All right. The other part of that, they're really hard to catch. Right, you want to consistently limit out, right? Not so easy to do at first glance. You want to catch big fish, not so easy to do at first glance. All right, so just the I guess the thrill of the chase are you know is the reason why we like fluke fishing. I'm going to share something with you guys, although it's a little embarrassing. Right, when I was younger in my 20s, I was definitely an idiot. Right, so I, I totally was. What a what a tool I was, and I'll never forget. I was in Bay Park Fishing Station, and I was about like striped bass and offshore and like big adventure. And the guy was, you know, an older gentleman was talking to me. And again, it's kind of embarrassing. He was talking to me nicely. He's like, "Oh man, I love fluke fishing. You know, it's like my favorite type of fishing." And I looked at him. I'm like, "Oh man, I don't like fluke fishing. It's boring." You know, completely dismissed him. Right. And I understand why I did it now that, I, now that I'm older, because fluke fishing is like at the surface, looks like it's this easy thing to do, but really underneath it, it's probably the highest skill fishery that we have. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. You've gotta be a good fisherman. You've gotta be good on the rod. Where most other fish, striped bass, they commit suicide right tuna fish sea bass whatever not fluke fluke are hard to catch again the small ones different but you know but to really want to be dialed in 
it, they're not that uh, they're not that easy to catch. So that's you know, typically this is like where I'll like I'll share stories. I don't know if any of you guys want to share a story like your best day of fluke fishing in our area this, before before I talk because I like to share with people. Anybody want to like share their best day of fluke fishing? One person. All right, so you had a four pound fish. Twelve. Twelve. Holy crap! All right, May. Uh, yeah, it was wrong. May. Okay. No, it was June. June. Same thing. All right, so I'm I'm not gonna like repeat the name of the bridge, um, but so this gentleman here, what's your name? Gary. Gary. All right, so Gary shared his best day was a twelve pound double digit fluke caught in our bays. Slammer. Awesome good how cool is that that's great right that's a good day right love to hear that um one thing i'm going to also share with you guys like our area man like freeport debs jones even further to the west doesn't have like a great reputation for fluke fishing right it doesn't like you talk to people they're like oh fluke fishing to the to the east is is better and all that I, first of all, completely vehemently disagree. We limited out on every one of our trips in August last year with fish over eight pounds on every single, on every single trip, right? That's, that's world-class fishing as far as I'm concerned, all right? The reason why we don't have the rep, in my opinion, that um, necessarily other parts of Long Island do is for a couple of reasons. A, number one, we don't have um, a lot of charter boats, right? We've got a handful of charter boats like myself, right? So there's not a lot of information out there. And also, there's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of organized PR, right? Public relations about it, right? So there's just not a lot of info out there. So looking at it though, in my mind, hearing okay, twelve pound fish there. I know how we did. I know how the you know the professional captains do as well that are here. Um, they do really well, and I also know the head boats by us do really well too. You know, it just depends what type of fisher, fishermen and fisherwomen that are on the on at a time, right? So, the reason why catching, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move us from just fishing for fluke. I'm gonna transition us over now to trophy fishing. Okay, the reason why fishing consistently is a challenge is a challenge is for a few reasons, right? There's so much you need to be good at, right? You need to have your boat dialed in. Your boat needs to be running. It needs to be set up, right? Forget about even even how it's organized. It needs to be running well, right? On top of that, it needs to be set up correctly. All your equipment has to be available. You can't, you, know, you, you can't, as soon as you're hunting for something, you now lost time because likely you lost, lost a rig or whatever during a prime time. You need to be in the water all the time. So everything has to be organized. So your boat has to be running, has to be organized. That's two things. Third thing. You need to know how to run your boat, right? A boat is not a bus. A boat is another weapon that you have. And a matter of fact, for fluke fishing, it is a super, super, super important weapon. Your boat catches fish, right? Your boat is gonna catch fish. Then on top of that, you need to have an idea where the fish are. So now I'm on thing number four, right? You need to know where the fish are. Then you need to know how to captain your boat, how to run your boat. You need to know how to put your boat on prime bottom, right? That's six things I'm up to. Now it's time to talk about being an angler. You need to know how to, how, how, so assuming you're on the fish, you need to know how to catch them, right? And with any other species, I would say that last one, don't worry about so much. It's more important to be on the fish, but with fluke, man, it's a totally different story, right? So angler, angler skill, is really important for fluke fishing, all right? So that's seven different things that you need to be good at before you can be a fluke fisherman, all right? Seven. For other fishing, it's six, okay? Because the angler skill is not as important. But for fluke fishing, it's seven. That's a lot, a lot of things, right? And I like to compare fishing to other other sports and other activities because it's easy, sometimes it's easy for people to understand. I'm gonna compare it to a triathlete, right? So there's an order of things really that you want to you want to make sure that you're that that you prioritize and get good at. And a lot of people, a lot of us fishermen, we jump to like, hey, rods and reels, right? Or colors. And I hear so much conversation around that. 
And honestly, that's a lower priority. And if you compare it to a triathlete, right? Triathlete, you know, is, is swim, bike, run. And the triathletes love their equipment, right? So, so I've met these triathletes. I used to run a cycling team. My son, my son is the mate on the boat, cycle pretty heavily. The triathletes will talk about spending $1,000 to drop a quarter pound off their bike. They're 20 pounds overweight and undertrained, right? Yet, they're talking about buying equipment to make themselves go faster. And we laugh at that. We're like, that's crazy, right? What should they be doing? They should be, you know, potentially dialing in their fitness, right? That's how you go faster, right? And then when you maximize what you're doing, then you can go and do that. Or you work your butt off and you're like, you know what? I know I'm not really gonna get the utility out of this, but let me do it because it's, it's cool to use and it, it, it'll bring me personal enjoyment, right? Same thing with fishing. The equipment's important and it's good to have usable equipment, but as far as like dialing that in, you dial that in after you have like a lot of those other variables in, like your boat's good, you know how to run your boat, you know where the fish are, you know what techniques you're gonna use, and then you figure out what equipment to maximize that, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna dial ourselves in. We're going to uh, talk about how to, how to go big and be consistent doing it, all right? So the most important thing to do with fish, before you start with anything else, is figure out where they are, all right? Nothing else is important if you're not fishing where the fish are, right? Those other things help you get on the fish, but the, your biggest priority is to figure out where the fish are. Period. End of story. So if you're having conversations with your friends about equipment, you should probably be having conversations or you can have conversations with your friends about where the fish are. And I've got some friends that are that are in, you know, that are here today, and they'll know. They if you ask them, what does Doug talk about? Yeah, Doug's constantly talking to us about like, hey, how we're doing, what we're seeing. You know, and the thing that I'll share with you, your network's important, and everybody that you know that'll talk to you about fishing is important right i have learned so much from people who nobody gives a time of day to because they're beginners right everybody's got something beginners have put me on pieces that i didn't know about they're like oh yeah i got snagged i was like blah 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 i was like i don't even know where the heck i was i'm like where were you like i don't know here are my here are these numbers i'm like well that's a new piece thank you right let's talk let's talk about it right i'll talk to you, you got to give everybody the time of day don't dismiss anybody you'll never know what someone's gonna tell you. And also like in getting information, one of the things that I'll share with you, if somebody's giving you information, the best thing to do is, is not say anything. Like a lot of times as fishermen, like we're proud of our accomplishments and we're so quick to say, oh, you caught that fish, I caught this fish. Boom, all of a sudden you're now a giver and not a receiver. And you just missed out on an opportunity to get information, right? So it's like, it's, it's for me, I don't, you know, I don't care who comes and talks to me. I love to talk to people, right? I'll, and I'll even give up some stuff as well. I don't care. It's, you know, it doesn't really matter because it's, it's, it's not super easy to do. All right, but the most important thing is where are the fish, right? So this is just a day that, this is just a day that we had of uh, food fishing for me. Even though these guys were good, we were trophy fishing this day. But it's just a fun, you know, fun day, big, you know, big fish. We. Uh, we ended up, you know, we limited out. It was one of the one of the trips. There's some more video of, of some of the other stuff, but uh, they um, we limited out. We had fish over eight pounds that day too. Let's talk about the timelines, all right? And I'm going to talk about Gary. Gary said that he had a slammer fish in May June. I'm going to guess it was probably more. It was closer to the beginning of June than the latter part of June, if I had to guess. Yeah. yeah okay. Great. So May, you want a trophy fish? you fish your behinds off in the bay, all right? You totally fish your behinds off in the bay. That's where it's going off, all right? I'm gonna to talk to you about where to go, but the when is in May, we're fishing in the bays. June, we're fishing in the bays and they're starting to move out into the inlets, right? I'm, not, I'm still not fishing, I'm still not fishing. You can try outside, you may get lucky. At the end of June, we've had a couple of decent days, but um, if you're playing the numbers, I'm fishing in the bay and in the inlets first, right? 
school's still not out, so you can still mostly be on your own. Like everyone's like busy with kids' sports and all that, so things are still pretty quiet in the bay. July, they start moving out to the reefs. So in July, you're fishing the reefs, right, in 50 feet of water. People, I hear people, oh, I'm running out to cholera, I'm running out to here, I'm running out to there. I'm like, yeah, let me know if you do anything. I'm not running out there. I don't think it, you know, I don't think it's happening yet. And most of the time, people say, oh, I didn't catch anything. The fish are set up on the reefs, a little spread out. They're not like, they're not stacked, but there's a lot of fish, right? There's a lot of small fish, me, you know, medium sized fish. Doormats are a little bit harder, a little bit harder to catch. July is about fun and it's about numbers. All right, August, man. <laughs> That's a time that you dial yourself in, right? August is about trophy fish in our area, all right? It carries over into September, all right? The thing to look in September, though, is that first, if we have a big storm at the end of August and the uh, beginning of September, it'll shut it down. Or you'll also see um, the fish starting to slow down a little bit locally. Or the thing that's, that, the thing that's in, in, in interesting, though, is that in August and September, there's still a really good bay bite going on. There's a really good bay bite going on. Doesn't make sense, right? Well, there's a lot of fish that hang out in the bay and they're starting to get more active because they're getting ready to boogie out of there. We'll talk about where to fish, but if you can't get out in the ocean or you only have a couple of hours to do, I'd still fish the bay. We have a little 18 foot boat. I'll like grab my son if we're not working and we'll go fishing for a couple of hours in the bay. And typically we'll limit out, at, you know, in a couple of hours. We'll just, uh, we'll, I'll talk about where we're fishing, but it's really, really good, all right? September, like I said, that's really sort of the, I mean, it is the end of the season, but it, the fish are starting to really push, push out offshore. So let's say you say that it blows them out. Do they spend the winter further out? They're, the they're, on, they're so I'm not a biologist, uh -huh. but I'll tell you where, I believe they, they're sitting out in the continental shelf, right? So, the yeah, the winter, they're out, they're out like in super deep water. And what ends up happening, you'll hear like one of the controversial things that, that people talk about are the draggers whacking them in the winter, right? So there's that whole, there's that whole thing. I'm not gonna get into that. I don't have an opinion on any of that. But, but. and yet in the beginning of the season, you're saying, in they, bays in May, they just come they, all the way yep, in? They all come in, they come in the bays to breed. To breed. To breed, yeah. It's a it's a happy type of party. Okay. Do they come in May or do they come in before May? So I'm not exactly sure when they're actually moving in, to be honest. I don't have my act together Season that far. So I would imagine the reason that I, reason I ask, sorry, is a lot of times we try to fish the inlets when we think they're coming through. And we catch them in the bay, but I don't catch them in the inlet. So they're they're in the back they're in the back bays, they're set up in the back bays and there's a ton of fish back there. They're not wintering there because they all moved out, right? So I'm not exactly sure when they come in. I have no clue. I guess if you could figure it out, you know, you could time it, but to be honest with you, I'm like looking for striped bass. You mentioned the inlet in June, so. I because they're on their way out. It's easier to catch them on the That's it, they're on their way out, they're like hanging out, and they're like, they're, they're about to set up, you know, outside on the reefs and stuff. I mean, I, I don't know if all the fish um, come in because there's definitely bodies of fish that, that'll move in and, you know, there's bodies of fish that'll move in in August. I don't know where the heck they come in from. I don't exactly know like where all the bodies of fish are. There's, I mean, there's a ton of, there's a ton of fish. They come in, they set up shop. They're here for the summer. They're definitely moving from shallow, shallow to deeper, right? But generally, they're in the bays in, in May, coming in from, coming in to breed, right? June, they're moving out, setting up on the reefs. August, it's reefs to deeper. I'll see another body of fish. I don't know if it's fish coming in from the bay that are setting up, fish coming in from deeper, coming in a little bit shallower to get to eat more, but everybody's on the feed bag in, in, uh, in August, all right? And then September, you know, first week or two in September, if there isn't a storm, you can, you can, you can grab a hanger as well, all right? Um, we just talked about this. So trophies, where to find them, all right? It's the, uh, I'm gonna talk about May and June. All right, May. The entire month of May is really good. Where to find these fish that I have found has always been most most successful? In the bays, second half of the outgoing tide, in shallow water, like four to seven feet, right up against drop-offs. That's where the fish are setting up in, um, in May. 
that's where they set up. All right. Why? This is what I think. What I think is that the water is coming out of all of our marshes. It's warm. The fish are like, oh my God, I feel so much better. Let me eat now that I'm comfortable. And all the bait is washing away. The, you know, deeper in the holes, the water's colder, right? So they're setting up right on the shallow area. The fishing is a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Turn your motor off when you're fishing. We'll get into technique in a little bit, but in case I tell you that, because it's so shallow. As, as it turns into June, they'll start dumping into the drop-offs. They'll like go over the hump, they'll set up a little bit deeper, they'll set up around the bridges, they'll set up in front of the bridges, right? They'll set up in front of behind the bridges, find, find your structure, but they're in the bay, but they've gotten deeper. The water's more comfortable, like we're in, we're in June now, it's pretty warm, right? Water's, the water maybe above 60, maybe not, um, but that's, you know, it's right around, right around in there, it's pretty nice, yeah, the, but the fish have moved a little bit deeper. Still in the bays, but and then also that's where the inlet starts heat, heating up as well. Inlet, fine, you know, fine, you gotta find your areas. The, 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 the fluke will stack up. Pay attention because they generally stack up in the same places year over year. There's no, these, these fish aren't like striped bass where they're moving all over the place. They're generally setting up. They'll move, sure, but they set up and they hang out for a little while. And that's the good part, right? That's the good part. So that's early, that's earlier. All right, where to find them in July? Uh, this is my crazy daughter who's now in college, who has like spent her, uh, she spent her, so she's my youngest daughter. She has worked in Bay Park pretty much her whole entire life. Um, she has, she actually rigs all my offshore uh, tuna gear. She's, uh, she's awesome. So in July, we talked about this a little bit before, the reefs, all right, undulating areas and if you're fishing open bottom, you're looking for bait like squid that sets up. We have a lot of squid that sets up in our area. So a lot of times when you're fishing on the open bottom, you know, that's not really open bottom. Look on your machine and you'll see that there's bait there. There's a reason why. Like the bottom of the ocean isn't flat, right? There's like little little waves and stuff like that. And that, that, that collects bait, right? Pay attention to it. Pay attention to where. And I'm gonna talk about using your boat electronics a little bit later. But pay attention to these spots, all right? We're gonna talk about more technique, but it's that 50 feet of water. People still like to, you know, like I said, they'll go out to the collar or whatever. I'm not gonna say you're not gonna tomahawk it there, but that's not really, I'm not, I'm not, if, if, I'm, getting, if I'm getting smoked inshore, I'll take, I guess I'll take a ride. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely a lower priority choice for me in July. Towards the end of July, I'll start going out. But early July, 4th of July, middle of July, not so much. All right, August is trophy time. All right, that is your money time, right? Other than May in the Bay, right? Other than May in the Bay, trophy time is August. And that's 50 to 70 feet. So anywhere between the reefs to the cholera banks, that's that is the depth of, 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 where they, uh, of where they are. It's time to definitely start moving deep. Not a problem. You can take your exploratory runs. Don't rely on reports. Make your own info. I know it's tough to do sometimes, uh, you know, not to listen to what people are doing, but if you're looking for extraordinary fish, if you're looking to catch fish better than, better than your you know, fellow fishermen, you gotta live on your own. And we'll talk about that. September, bays again, we talked about that before, and really starting to push. So I'm, I'm fishing cholera banks, and and here's another thing. How many guys here blackfish? All right, well, if you don't blackfish, it's time to make friends with blackfish or men, all right? Because you, you, you want their pieces. They're not gonna give them up easily. But you want to fluke fish on their pieces. That's what you want to do, all right? That is, likely where you're going to get a trophy fish. It's in structure. And I'll tell you what, when we fish, I am constantly on pieces. It's misery for my mate because we blow through about 20 rigs a trip. It's misery for him. He's my son, so I can laugh at him a little bit and yell at him when he's slowing up. But we, we constantly, this is where, 
This is where the boat being set up is super important. You have to be ready to switch out, especially in July. You're in prime time. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to do that, but you've got to be able to switch. But you, you're fishing in structure. That's where these fish are. They're in structure. You want to limit out? They're in structure. The bigger fish will hold in structure unless you get lucky and you find a, a body of fish that's on squid. That's great. That's an awesome day if the squid boats didn't whack them, right? Structure is is your friend. It's frustrating. You're gonna go through a lot of tackle. You gotta learn how to get your boat out. You have to learn how to get your rigs out of it. I'll talk about that if, if and if I forget to, you know, let me know. Oh. All right. So this is uh, another fluke day we had. All right. They're, they're short clips, but these are. This is all by us, guys. These are all. This, these are all days that we've had by us. I'm gonna talk about terminal tackle and rigs. So we talked about how you know how to set your boat up. The boat's got to be good. Talked about where they are. Now we're going to talk about terminals and rigs. The first thing I'm going to share with you all is this is my opinion, right? So I'm just sharing with you. You can look at me and say, "Oh, Doug, you're you know that's hokey. You don't worry about it." And that's fine that you feel that way. I'm just I'm sharing with you guys. Um, how we do it and I'm truly sharing with you what we're doing at the end of every single one of my lines is a snap swivel right a beginner's snap swivel I actually use high, high end snap swivel but I use a snap swivel everyone's like oh man I tie my stuff to barrel barrel swivels and all and you know I want it to be neat and this and that it takes too long to swap out a rig on a barrel swivel especially when you're trying to boogie. Bite is on, where you just lost your third rig of the day. You, for me, I'm gonna make a mistake when I tie that rig. A, number one, it takes too long, and B, I'll make a mistake and my knot will slip, and that sucks. All right, it sucks because your knot's gonna slip on a good fish. So I have surgeon loops or even a barrel swivel on the end of all my, uh, all my rigs, and I just snap the rig onto the onto the snatch level and we're we're like nascar pit racers dj has got i don't think that people are out of the box for more than 10 seconds brings it up that you know the, the the terminal tackle likely if we have to pull it out of something gets broken in half boom we have we have our rigs are set up in bags i've got each rig in a baggie with with velcro snap rigs right on the wheelhouse uh, if i'm if i'm close to him I'll, I'll i'll give him i'll hand him a baggie or he can quickly do it boom 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 10 seconds put a new sinker on or bucktail on bait up and done 10 like 10 15 seconds is all it takes we um the other thing is i use a high low rig for everything let's be simple about this i do not want to be spending a ton of time over indexing on anything. Right? I use a lot of M3 high low rigs. You can tie your own high low rig, but I use a high low rig for everything. And it's really easy to catch sea bass on them too. It's awesome. So the high low rigs, what we do is we'll change what's on the business end of the high low rig depending on the time of year. Earlier in the year, I'm using a lot of shorter baits. I'll use a three and a half inch artificial and I'll tip it with a single spirit. So the way, what we use is I use fish bites, right? I use a lot of fish bites. The other, the other brands we found, you know, uh, the gulps have deteriorated a little bit. And we like, we're going through too many of them. The fish bites, they make this, they make this thing called an easy bait, which is like this 12 inch strip. DJ is the one, my son is the one, the mate is the one to turn me on to it. And he basically cuts these things into three inch strips, puts them on the end of the hook, they're scented, and then we'll just tip it, right? So we'll have like a little bucktail or something on the top, you know, on the, on the top and bottom, uh, or maybe even three. We'll have two hooks and a, and a bucktail on the end, and everything's like three inches. And we're, the high-low the high, low, high low is king. As you, and you could still get a hanger fish in the bay on that. 
I'm not so worried about the big profile baits when I'm in the bay because there's a lot of small bait that's in there anyway. So the fish aren't, aren't really, they're not like super geared on, oh, that's worth it because everything is small. In, in July, August, when I'm switching my mentality to trophy fishing, all right, we're always trying to catch a trophy fish, but August, we're still smiling on the boat, but I may feel, tell people not to eat lunch at, at a particular time. Like, see, like everybody starts eating at the same time. I'm like, all right, one guy can eat, everyone else please in the water. Um, what we'll do is we'll switch the top hook to a super large profile bait. So what we'll do is we'll put a six inch grub on. So fish bites make some, gulp makes some, but fish bites again is who, who, who we're using now because uh, it lasts longer. Um, and I'll tip it, right? I can tip it with a, two spearing. If I'm fishing the ocean, I'll, you know, two spearing when we're on the charters, we'll always tip with two spearing right through the eyes, nothing, nothing super fancy. Or you can use a fluke belly also and just tip it with a long fluke belly. That's, that's what we like, we like to do. I'm going to talk about tipping versus not tipping uh, in a second. So that's, that is, that's the way we fish, all right? Is there any, is there any questions about that? I actually have, a, uh, I have one of our high-low rigs that we use here. On the bottom, hey Doug, you put a bucktail on the bottom. I'll ask a question for you guys. If I can keep it below four ounces, I do. When I go above four ounces, we put a sinker on. But the beautiful thing is that we typically have a loop on the bottom and we'll just switch out a bucktail or switch out a, uh, a sinker. It's easy peasy. Everything's simple. Nothing is overly complicated. I'm not using beautiful fancy knots. We use, for our dropper loops, we're using a figure eight. It's quicker to tie than a dropper loop. I'll be honest with you, I'll, I'll, I'll confide in you. I've used surgeon's loops. DJ got pissed at me making them. They're just so quick for me to tie. I'll just do a quick surgeon's loop and then put put a, a hook with a with a skirt on or if, if we're breaking off, if I'm not using a pre-made one. Um, it works great. It doesn't sit as nicely as the figure eight. The figure eight sits nicely. But again, as long as the bait is being presented nicely, don't spend time on things that aren't going to equal fish. The only thing I care about is catching fish. I don't care about things looking pretty if it's not going to help me catch a fish. I don't care. Think about it. Well, you know, do you think that the fish are like, oh, you know what? I'm only eating pink with a silver flash today. And it's got to be bait that was bought or caught myself from here. That's not what happens. You know, you ever two or three knots running past you is pretty damn quick, which is how fast we all troll. They're looking at it. They're like, oh, it smells like bait. It looks like bait. I'm going to eat that. That's what's happening. So get yourself dialed in with simplicity so that if you have to change something, you can change it quick. What does that have to do with catching trophy fish? If you're not fishing, man, you're not gonna catch the fish. You gotta be in the water and you gotta be giving yourself as many cracks as you possibly can at catching that fish. You gotta have as much practice as you have. You gotta know the area that you're fishing in. If you're screwing around and changing your tackle around and stuff like that, trying to figure, it's, it's too much other stuff. Where are the fish? Let me get my boat over where the fish are and let me get my bait where the fish are. That is, and how can I do that in the most efficient way possible? Can you just show us the... I'm going to pass that around in a second. Absolutely. All right. Here's a, here's a religion conversation for us. To tip or not to tip our hooks with, with natural bait. So, all of our charters will tip the we'll tip our we'll tip our hooks with with a spearing or two i find that the action's a lot a lot uh higher i find that the fish bite more aggressively i find that we'll catch more smaller fish we've had some absolute fluke studs that have come on our boat and they don't tip it's different though they have fewer bites and they're much more in tune with what's going on on the other end of their hook. You can still catch a hanger tipping, right? What we find is that the fluke are filtered out by using a high quality artificial. Catch less fish, 
but they're bigger fish because these fish are hitting the profile. That doesn't get the bay, I always tip in the bay. You don't need to worry about that. All right. I'll talk about the ocean fishing. Go ahead. How far off your main line, how far back is your upper bay? I will, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I don't have, again, everyone's like, oh, 16 and a half inches. I wouldn't really sweat it as far as like the exact. You want one guy on the bottom, one guy, I don't know, this much higher up off the bottom and another guy like that much higher off the bottom. If you're off by a couple inches, whatever. The fish aren't gonna be like, whoa, 14 and a half inches, man, no good with me. They're not doing that. They're like, oh, okay, that's the middle bait. It's kind of like where I'm at, let me hit it, boom. And, and they hit it. So that's the deal with, um, with tipping. All right, you can do it, I do it. Personally, when I'm fishing for myself, I'll do it. I'll mostly, I'll mostly tip. Uh, unless there's a lot of fish around, then, uh, then I won't tip, all right? Equipment. What do you like to tip with the most of your personal fish? Oh, I just a single spearing through the eye or two spearing. That's it. Again, I'm simple, right? I don't want to over it. I strike bass fish like that. I, I, I fish everything like that. And we tomahawk fish. We do really well. And I strongly feel that the reason why we have such a high success rate is because we're fishing so much. We fish more than, than most boats. And what I mean by that is give me a one hour period of time. How much fishing time is my bait in the water in front of the fish? And our fishing time, our, you know, our soak time is very high. I, we do not, you know, we do not screw around. My boat is over prime area as much as possible. And my, it's, and we're, we're in strikes, we're in the strike zone. That's the way you catch the fish, right? So all this other stuff may refine that, but if you're, you have to be fishing with where the fish are, that's the way to catch trophies. And I know that like everybody looks man for like the magic thing. Okay. On the two days after the first full moon in August and when the temperature is exactly 81 degrees and it's exactly an incoming tide fish this exact spot that's not the way it works you know and it's not the way it works every day looks a little bit different you have to figure out what's going on and you have to fish all right hey and here's another 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 important tip all right our time is limited all right some of us have more time to fish than not some of us have you know significant others that are more tolerant than, than not as well or, or whatever. Try to fish two days in a row. If it means giving up like a day the next weekend, it's better to fish two days in a row. The reason why is you fish your first day, you've got a lot of information, and then you get to fish the next day knowing what it's, that day is gonna look like for you. You know where you had them, you know where they're not. I am fine knowing where they're not as well. That's great information. Where aren't the fish? They're not here. They're somewhere, but I know they're not here. And this is the way it looks. So let me change my depth. Let me change my time of day maybe. Let me change my piece, right? You can change your technique too, right? So on our boat, what we use, this is like, I saw the tags on, I just got, I, they just, it just came in. This is what every single person on our boat is gonna be fishing with this year. It's a slow pitch rod with a bit with a with Alexa HD bait casting reel, 22 pounds of drag. The rod itself is, if you can see, looks flexible, but this thing can handle up to eight ounces easily. Typically I'm fishing three to five ounces. I'll go to six when it's really when it's really windy. Eight is is a rough day. Um, it's it's super light, so one-handed one-handed rod. I love the slow pitch. Slow pitch is the bomb. What I found is that our customers were missing bites on on the traditional rods. All right, the slow pitch rods you can feel everything that's going on, and that's why they're so they're so. We're not slow pitch jigging actually. The way we work the rod is. You're just basically bouncing the rod, and I'll talk about that in a second. You're just bouncing the rod like this, but that's why you want everything light, also as well. All right, I'll pass this around if you guys, for you guys that aren't familiar, familiar with this. All this is obviously Daiwa. Okay. So, um, what, do, what, do you, what do you mean by the term slow pitch? Actually, so the slow pitch is the way the rod bends. It's actually a slow action rod. You see the way it bends? Yes. 
best rods bend like this. Okay, it's got more flexibility. All right, it's slow rod bends bends closer, bends closer. It bends more in an even in an even arc. All right. The reason why this is good is because we're using you know braided line. We're setting up and we're the way we set up and it gives a little bit of forgiveness in there and also the sensitivity too. Like when that rod, when that tip is fast like that, it's a little bit more difficult because the rod's loading up with a heavier bucktail. With this though, loading up like that, you feel everything that's going on. You'll feel, and the rod tip is still gets, you know, the rod tip will get engaged on a quick, on a quick hit. I mean, this, the, I think this rod is like a 10 ounce rod, to be honest with you, it weighs nothing. Yet, we're gonna catch, we're gonna use this for striped bass jigging as well. The rod, the rod is kick, you know, it's kick butt. All right, so that's, that's generally, um, that's generally, well, not generally, we use that for everything. I use that in the bay, I use that in the ocean. In the ocean, I'm using 20 to 30 pound uh, J braid. You use the other, you know, other, other braid products too, but thir no, no heavier than 30 pound for fluke fishing. 20 pounds is good as long as you're good at knowing what's going on because you're fishing in structure so your line gets nicked up 30 pound 30 pound gives you a little bit of uh flexibility you have to go like a half an ounce heavier uh when uh when using it in the bay you can use 15 to 20 pound test um but that's the uh that's the story don't feel like you have to go out and buy like new equipment but fluke fishing takes skill all right so here I'm gonna show you guys a video. I want you guys just to look real quick. These guys were stud fluke fishermen. They were really, really good fluke fishermen. I want you to watch the way they're setting up on their fish and watch what their rods are doing. All right, take a look at it. It's, quick. it's gonna be quick. So just, uh, just, just take a look at it. See how, see how he set up like that? He like brought that rod all, he didn't high stick it. He brought it all the way up. I can, I can play it again if you guys want. Um, these Two hundred dollars. I mean, I don't know. If, like you know, that one's a two hundred dollar rod because uh, they're slow pitch rod. I'm not fishing. You know, I could get access to like the really expensive stuff. I don't need it. It's not going to catch me any more fish. Um, if it was my own personal rod, and I'm like, all right, I worked really hard, and it's like driving a Cadillac. Yeah, you know, I'll do it because because the experience is good. But as we all know, a Cadillac or Porsche isn't going to get me to place A and B any quicker on the LIE. It's all the same. Skill. All right, listen to me, guys. Here's the thing that's crazy. Skill of the angler is extremely important when fishing. This does make a difference. It's the only fishery, I guess, besides blackfish and maybe jigging tuna. But for, let's, for, for by, by us, it's the only fish, out of all the fish that we catch, you can catch a lot more fish by being a higher skilled angler, all right? The reason for that is fluke bite differently on different days. Sometimes they commit suicide, which is awesome. They're like, they're tomahawking the fish. It's great, that's easy, you look like a superstar. Other days, they short hit the bait. So like take your take your arm if like you're not familiar with this and just give it a quick tug. That's the way it'll feel. But if you're not on a on a sensitive outfit, you may not feel it. Other days they lay on the bait. They literally will just you'll feel like a, a tug. Nothing fouls it up. But if you hit it really quick, it'll rip it out. You know they, you won't connect because the fish haven't gotten a chance to lay it on. They'll hit it now they'll lay on it. So there's generally three different, three different types of uh, way they head. And you as an angler need to figure it out. When I'm on the boat, when DJ and I are working our boat, we can tell what's going on. We can tell what type of day it is, right? Like something, sometimes what will happen too, and this is the reason why we're switching over all the slow pitch stuff, is that um, I'll go 10 minutes and nobody will catch a fish. And I'm like, oh, I'm like in a great area. What's going on? I'll, I'll grab someone's rod, we'll jig it, and I'll feel the fish, but it's like really quick hits. Like I'll feel it, boom, and I'll set up on it, all right? This is the way you fish the different bites. This is important because the big fish do the same thing. It's, this is important. Quick bite, all right, quick bite, 
So and I'm going to pass this around. People were asking me about the actually about the rigs. This one's got a. Uh, just be careful on this one, guys. Like well, I'll pass this around, but just be careful you don't hook yourself because that'll stink. All right. So what what I'm doing, right? What the person is doing is we're literally sitting here and going like this, up and down, and you'll feel it, right? Or I'll even do this, nice and light. Quick bike day, as soon as I feel that little, like literally, like go like this, that's the hit. As soon as you feel that, boom, you set up right away. That's awesome, you do that, it aggravate me, do that, do that on the boat, right? Um, but um, you literally set up on the fish right away on short bite days. How do you know it's a short bite? Well, they're not attacking the crap out of it because you feel them hit it and they disappear, right? So the first thing that you go, the first, well, the first check down that you do is you, you react quickly and see if it's a short bite day. Short bite day, great. You'll hook up right away with it. As soon as you feel that boom, you stick it to them. The, the slow pitch rods are beautiful because they'll, they have enough backbone, you know, with it, with it, with, 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 they'll react. How do you know if it is the uh, lay on the bait day? Well, you do short bite technique and you keep on missing them. Well, that's not working. So what you do on laying on the bait day is you open up your reel. You feel that, you can even fish with an open reel, which is the reason why I like the Lexa, uh, the bait casting, because it's a one, it's a one-handed reel. I just press with your thumb and you're, and you're fishing with an open, uh, you're fishing with an open, um, open reel. What you do when you feel the bite is you lay back you give it, you open it up, and you just like let the line out and let them take it, right? You just gotta be careful if you're in the, if you're in like some super rubble that you don't hang yourself up in, all right? But you just let them take it, then you close it, kind of like bring it up, feel the you feel the weight of the fish, you feel the yeah he knows how to do this really well. Uh, <laughs> the um, you feel the weight of the fish, you feel it loading up, and then you just give it a shot at the end. Like a little, uh. and then you get, that's the way, they're there. No, 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 that's the way, they're there, man. They're there, right? But this takes a lot of skill, right? This takes a lot of skill, and this is important. And this is the way you can limit, this is the way you limit out with great fish. This is what we do. Now, when you're on our boat, DJ and I are helping everybody out all the time. We're all over everybody. We know what it looks like. I'm putting us over great structure. Um, short trip. Uh, so let me, let me see if I talk about. Oh, good, cool. All right. Actually, I did do the slide. I'll talk about that next. All right. That's the technique, though. All right, of what we're doing. I'm going to pass this around. This, just to let you know, I typically this is a M3, um, an M3 outfit. They've got a bunch of them. Um, this I'll use this when it's super sticky. I don't want too many hooks because we're getting hung up all over the place. Right, so I'll just move one hook. Sometimes I have two hooks in here though, if it's like if it's less sticky. I'll change this guy out to a sinker if I'm over over four ounces, like five ounces or more. I'll change this out for a uh, out for a sinker. Alright, but I'll pass this around. Do me a favor, please don't hook yourself. Um because that'll stink. And they won't you let me put talk. A sinker on there? Are you fishing? Well, so this is a bucktail, I don't need it. This is three ounces. Yeah. So I don't need it. But then but, fish another loop and have at least uh, two bait. So if I'm in sticky, sticky water. I'm only fishing this, right? And even if I put a sinker on here, I'll still just fish this, all right? I'll do a big, uh, don't worry about the tail. DJ put this on just to make it look good. We're fishing six inches. Typically I'll fish six, you know, I'm in the ocean on heavy, I'm fishing a six inch profile like we talked about, six, six inch grub uh, tipped. On the bottom, I'll put something shorter um, with, and I'll tip it or, or not. All right? If I'm really all or nothing and I know there's big fish around, I'll go long on the bottom too. Is that a rig that you made or you bought? This is an M3. This is the M3 tackle guy. He makes that whole thing. He makes the whole thing. The whole thing he makes. When it's sticky, you'll use the bucktail on the bottom of the hook? Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta be up and down. You gotta be fishing in sticky, sticky areas. Um, up and down, man. You cannot be too light. You have to make sure your line is up and down and you're feeling yourself over and you gotta listen to me because I know what's coming up because I'm reading my machine. I'm like, hey, everybody up five feet. What I'll also do if I'm like fishing over a piece or like a big a big sticky lump on a reef is I'll have people suspend their bait at 10 feet. I'll get over it and I'll say drop down, drop down quick because I want to catch right on the other end of the, of, the, uh, of the piece that we're fishing. All right, so I'll pass this around too. 
There you go. What are the biggest bucktails that you use on the bottom? Well, uh, I typically don't go over four ounces. Even you know, once you start water. getting to like five, yeah, well, you know, my boat drifts a little bit different. We have a down east boat. So our boat drifts great. It's not wind impacted at all. We drift with the current. So we can use lighter line because we're kind of, we're matching what the current, what the current is doing. Um, so for those of you who don't know what a down east boat is, if you guys ever watch Wicked Tuna, it's one of those boats. It's got a big keel on it. It's a heavy boat. It's a 35 foot boat. All right, boat handling. This is important. All right, so four ounces, you're switching over to a pine sinker. And if I'm five, I'm on a sinker. Yeah, five, because yeah. now it's too heavy. I can't get the scope out and I'm going to get hung. Yeah. I'm going to get hung. Yeah. All right, I don't want to get hung. Oh, if you get hung, all right, and you have an expensive rig on or two people are hung, open up your reels and take your boat and run it up run it up and you can you like eight out of ten times or four out of five times you'll get it out it's the biggest pain in the ass because you got to stop fishing right if it's only one <laughs> sometimes i'll look at dj I'm like just get that effing thing out dude i'm not turning the boat around right. you know like we're like we're, we're in a drip for like 10 seconds somebody hangs up you still open it up and you can kind of like if you're fast enough you can kind of just like bounce it up and down like this and it'll work its way out that'll work dj's really good at it He's very good at it. He'll get you out like 65, 70% of the time. Um, and if you don't get it out, we're like NASCAR race change. You know, get, get the person back in. Boat handling. This is literally off of my GPS. All right, I pull this, I pull this off the GPS. Couple things to, uh, to recognize. All right, I got waypoints here, here. There's a waypoint in here. This is actually what I was fishing that day can't see it that well but it's buried in there right and this was my drift you can see me doing this about 150 times there was an awesome bite i can tell you exactly where the bite was the bite was right in here what do you think was on the bottom there you stop no, uh, i know it was on the bottom i'm not going to completely no, share it with you but <laughs> but uh but what do you think the structure was was it a wreck was it there was it was bed? it was it was on a reef on the reef but there was a piece on the reef. Gotcha. Right? That's, that's what it okay. was. Right? That's all I'm asking. No, no, that's fine. It doesn't really matter though. It just matters like where, you know, where you're where you're where you're setting up and find it. Here is the deal. This is important, guys. You gotta know how to use your electronics. You guys wanna be a good fluke fisherman? You don't have to be an electronics stud, but you need to know how to use your electronics. First and foremost, whenever you catch a fish, hit a waypoint. Whenever you catch a fish, hit a waypoint. What's gonna happen, let me see if I have a picture of it. No, I don't. All right, what'll end up happening is you'll get like a pattern on the piece that you're fishing with if you're always hitting a waypoint. So a piece may be big, a reef is big, even a wreck is big, but there are certain parts of the wreck and reefs that'll be more productive than other parts. The fish sit up there for whatever reason. Who knows? I don't care. I just wanna know where it's good. Right, it doesn't matter to me like, like great, this is where it is. But you gotta constantly be hitting your waypoints and you'll see the pattern, pattern set up. So then what happens is, okay, it's August, it's time to go to this depth of water. Where am I fishing? I'm not gonna call up my friends and be like, yo, dude, give me your lat lawns of exactly where you were. I don't want that, I have no interest in that. I was just like, oh, you had fish in 50 feet of water? Thank you, that's all I need to know. You go to your 50 feet of water, 60 feet of water, whatever, 70 feet of water, and you fish your waypoint. The fish set up there year over year. These are these are like resident fish, man. They hang out. They'll be there every single year. I don't you don't know exactly when they're gonna show up there. But in a day, the way you fish in a day is do not live and die in a spot, hoping for something to happen. You keep on moving, constantly move, 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 move. Find find some fish, short drift the crap out of it. When there's no more fish, move. Done, gone done right pay attention to what's going on right so i might be in a spot middle of the tide it's slow nothing's going to happen for the next two hours the fish may light up on the end of the tide or the beginning of the next tide but don't stay there for two hours hoping for the best go somewhere else keep on going 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 you may come back on a different tide because you feel strongly that the fish are going to be there but don't live and die by a piece and know what the heck you're fishing on like when you're first starting to get information it's hard 
I get it. But you're still catching fish. But are you guys hitting waypoints every time you catch a fish? You should see what my, man, my, my, my chart plotter looks like. You guys ever see a beautiful mind? The guy who lost his crap and like he like, like put the, an entire wall up full of notes and you look at it and people are like, oh my God, there's something wrong. That's the way my GPS looks. Like when you go out, it looks like, oh, there's thousands of waypoints. So Doug, how you differentiate it? Well, I know when I'm fluke fishing, I'll have like six waypoints bunched up together on a piece. That's where I'm starting. That's my beginning of the thing. That's what's worked for me. I know how to drift it, right? Like I'm gonna be back here next year, whatever the heck time of year this was. I'm not gonna wait for somebody to tell me it's good. I'm gonna go here, like I know it's good. Right, so at the very least, use your waypoints. The second key thing is use your tracks. Like you guys all know what a track is? I'm doing an electronics uh, seminar on Sunday where I'll go talk more about it. But track basically um, plots your, uh, plots how you've drifted. There's also a, there's also a, a, a course, there's also like a, like a course, a thing that points to the course that you're gonna go in so you can predict hitting specific pieces, but you know, that's getting a little bit more advanced. Pay attention to your track. And what's gonna happen most of the time, this day I got lucky, the drift didn't change, but a lot of times say this was like the important part. What'll happen is your drift will change. You'll only get like two or three drifts to do this. And what'll happen like to this day we were drifting like this. Then what'll happen is like maybe the wind kicks up and I start drifting like this. All right, what does that mean? That means now I got to start over here and I'll drift like this to get over that piece. But that's how you do it. You want to catch trophy fluke? You want to catch limits of big fish? If the fish are here, man, I got to get over here. I can't like hope and pray for the best that the fish are going to be over here. That's not where the fish are. The fish are here or wherever, wherever you found them. And you got to hammer the crap out of that piece and use your angling. So the captain, has to get his boat or her boat over the area. On the right side of the boat that everybody's fishing on, making sure that I'm drifting over the right piece with enough time for people to set up, but not too much time where they get hung up. And then the anglers got to get their crap in order where they're sitting here and we're all banging that little area and we're, we're death and destruction to everything that's underneath it and maximizing it. And that's, that's, that's it, that is it. And that's the reason why like, hey, listen, whatever, whatever, whatever uh, rig works for you the best, awesome. Whatever rod works for you the best, awesome. The one thing that I will say is the slow pitch rods do work better. They'll help you feel what's going on. I like them, they're awesome. You know, the one, one handed is way to go. And the, and the, and the high lows are great. The high lows are great because they just set up really good and they don't snag that much. We live and die by them. We've seen lots of big fish get caught on it, you know, so. And that's, you know, that is, that's mostly it, man. That, that's the way to catch trophy fish. You can all do it. You all can do it. And you don't need anybody else to help you. You know, somebody might say, oh, look, I had some fish on the collar. That's, you know, whatever, that's great. I don't even really necessarily believe reports unless I know the person actually caught the fish the day before, you know, that day. Not even the day before, but that day. It's like, oh, you had them? How many did you have? One fish, that's not a catch. You know, you had a couple fish? Okay, maybe that's interesting, all right? So that's, I'm gonna open it up for questions, but that's, guys, that's the key to the castle, right? I'm gonna. Oops. That's the key. This is the key. This is like when everything comes together. That's the way it looks. So on that, you mentioned like you know where the fish are or the hot spot is. And earlier you said you got to know where the fish are to position your boat. If you're not a charter guy out every day, I, I, I gave know where I, the fish are. I gave it to you. Okay. All right. May is the bay. Okay. June is 55 feet in the reefs. Okay. August is 55 up. feet to deeper. You gotta find your spots, yeah. right? I can tell you to go to the. So this is what this is how every this is how most people fish. Oh, Atlantic Beach Reef is great, and they just go and they blindly they blindly fish across the entire Atlantic Beach Reef. It's a big area, 
and you catch one fish and you're not paying attention to where you caught that one fish. Man, I caught one fish, I hit a waypoint, and then I hammer that one spot that I caught a fish on. The fish may be stacked there. I put my boat, I got a 35 foot down east boat. I get my boat within three feet of, oh, I got a story for you. So I'm fishing two years ago. I, I got out Saturday, my wife likes to fish. She's like, I wanna go fishing. You, you know, like we just got the boat, uh, you know, that I had to deal with. You should see what Christmas time looked like in my house. She was so pissed at me when we were building the boat. I had the entire living room. I had half the new boat in our living room. All the new parts were stacked up. It's like literally five days before Christmas. And my wife had one of those sit down conversations that we all like to avoid. Like, you know, it's like who wants to be a part of that one? Not me. But she sat me down. She's like, do you think that this is the way it's gonna look like when company comes over? And I look at it, you gotta go for it because if you don't go for it, you're never gonna get away with anything. I'm like, why, is there a problem? Right, was a question. Is there a problem with that? I was thinking about just like, kind of like moving the boxes so that the company can walk through. Like we had, I had my steering in there. I had, I had, I had a lot of, I had a lot of, I had my, I had a big ram in there. I had, I had a lot of stuff in there, it was not cool. She looked at me, she's like, it's not happening. So I, I grabbed my son and we cleared, you know, we cleared, we cleared, uh, we cleared everything out. But anyway, so my wife's like, hey, I endured all this crap. I wanna go fishing. So I, we go to go fishing in July. And my hands are slimy. And I'm not paying attention. And I'm doing my jig. Big fish comes. I set up on the fish and the rod flies out of my hand. Wow. Blunk, right in the water. 600 bucks in the water. <laughs> and I'm looking, I'm just like looking. and. The first thing I cannot do is get totally pissed and yell about how much money went overboard because my wife's on the boat with me. She has no clue that that rod cost 600 bucks. Zero, right? Like my, my wife's totally outstand, you know, totally understanding, but she has no clue that this is a $600 rod. So I'm like, oh, that was my favorite rod. You know, not a $600 rod. I'm like, oh, like totally mumbling to myself. Next day we go back, we had a charter the next morning, we pick him up. There was a hot bite in that area. I take him right to that rock. One of the charters, all of a sudden, is reeling up his, his line, and I see brand new braided line on his bucktail. He's like, oh crap, some, you know, like, I got hung up on me. I'm like, leave it. I'm like, it was brand new line. Typically when line soaks for a while, it gets funky. I pull it up, and I pull up my freaking rod that I had the night, the day before. And that's how I know I am within three feet of where of where I want to be, right? I found it, it was on a reef. And the very next day, it was awesome, I was so happy. It, was, you know, it only um, would have been better if the fish was still on. It was, yeah. <laughs> so that's, but that's what it looks like, right? Like you're on a reef, catch a fish, just repeat it, man, over and over and over again until you don't get one, right? Hit the little spots, go. How do you keep your boat sideways on those drifts so that so you turn the wheel? You can turn the wheel a little bit. You pin it over the right or over the left. As you're drifting, if you turn your wheel either right or left, it'll change. It'll change your boat. Matter of fact, sometimes if you turn it the other way, the boat will actually spin the other way. If it's not too windy. Right. That's what'll. Uh, that's what'll happen. You, I, even on our boat, my my wheel is always turned over. At what depth of water would you say it doesn't matter that your engine is running? I know what you said about shallow. I like four feet, anything more than four feet. I run I run our big boat, the motor stays on the whole time. Yeah. So okay. anything, like we're fishing, yeah, 15, 20 feet of water is fine. Okay. You know, these fish are like, have boats That's running over them yeah. all, all day long. They're not, they're not like in five feet of water, six feet of water, that's a, that's a little much. Like literally you're catching, Five feet of water, you don't understand how shallow it is. You lift your line up like this and your 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 lure comes up. That's how shallow I'm fishing in, in uh in May. Yeah, yeah. Let's just keep it quiet and you know, I shut it off. But I'm fishing on the you know, I'm fishing on the drop off. They'll set up on the on the on the side of the drop off. And you like falling tide better than incoming? No, uh for May. You may. Yeah, the rest of the other time I don't care. Thank you, Barry. You, you start in the shallow water and drip into the deep? Yeah, so are we talking May? Yeah, oh, yeah May, you're, you're basically, May, it's also funky because it depends on what, what uh, direction the wind is, is drifting as well. 
you know, some, I just, I'll go deep to shallow. I don't care. I just want to be where the fish are set up. You know, I just need to make sure that I'm putting the boat where the fish are. All right, so beggars can't be choosers. I got the tide coming in. I got the wind going away. The only thing that I really care about, whatever I'm fishing, is getting over this area, whatever that area looks like to you, and repeating it until there's nothing there. It's short drifting. It's, I do this in Montauk as well. It's not even like just an us thing. This is the way you catch big fish, right? This is what people come on our boat to do. So I know how to do this. I know how to run my boat really well. I, we know how to fish really well also. And we know, you know, it's the complete package. And this is what you guys need to do. Or you can come on our boat, right? We can show you how to do it. That would be great too. I'd love to have you. Um, I bring my GPS with me. <laughs> say that again, I'm sorry? I bring my GPS with me. Uh, no, don't do that. <laughs> that. That would be really upsetting. <laughs> so that would that upset me. You know, there's some, I mean, listen, sometimes, Sometimes, you know, we'll fish popular areas. I'll fish a popular area. Um, and sometimes I'm not fishing a popular area. You on the of the Hudson Canal? No. No, I am on the, I am on the, yeah, don't follow me though. Yeah, no, I'm joking with you. I'm uh, listen, here's the other thing to do too, right? Like if you see, if you want to become friends with charter captains, leave them alone when they're on the water. They know who you are. I know who, I know who everybody is. I see their boats and all, I know, who gives me room, right? So like one of the most one of the most frustrating things for me is I'm on a drift. Somebody's smart enough to figure out that I'm on a drift and they're paying attention to where I start my drift. So I'll pull myself up to do like a short drift and this knucklehead will race me to my drop in spot. That that's upsetting to me, right? It's like, okay, especially if it was my, you know, like I start, if it was theirs first, I always give way. Right, but it's not just me. It's like, you know, sharp guys or whatever. But if you're like super respectful to people, I don't care if somebody hops in on it because it's not my ocean, right? It's not my ocean. But like, wait till I'm, you know, wait till I'm in the middle of my drift and give me, I don't know, give me, you know, 20 yards, right? And that's why I make sure you're not drifting faster than me where you cut, where you bear down on it, right? Just be aware, like know what's going on. Like my boat doesn't drift as fast as most people's boats, right? If that's the case, start on the downside wind of me. So you'll drift faster than me. That's fine. I don't care, all right? Just be considerate, and I'll help you, man. I like it. Like I, I talk to people all the time. I don't care. I'll be like, yeah, yes, no, you know. So yeah, it's happening here. You know, good luck to you. Well, I'll talk to people. I don't the care. Nicest captain I've ever heard of. <laughs> Most captains uh, like that. Whatever. Like, what am I gonna do? Like, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not. It's not my ocean. I've got so many places I can go. I just need, like, if I'm in the middle of working, let me work. Right. That's it. I don't care. Like, just let me work. Like, I set up. I'm in a little area. I'm doing I'm doing my thing. You do your thing. You know, if you really annoy me enough, I'll slide off. Like, I do know, like, there's a whole bunch of places like this that have all these waypoints here. <laughs> it's exactly you know, what you would I'll do. I'll slide, like, I'll slide off. I'll slide off. I'll fish some of these other waypoints or whatever. You know, I'll do it to it. That's fine. The, uh, but that's, you know, if you want to, like, get info from me, you know. I'll talk to people. I'll be like, yeah, up, down, whatever. Yeah, you know. You mentioned the squid in the open ocean. How do you fish that? Well, the same. same. Yeah, you'll see it. Just set up on the bait. Oh, right. You'll set up on the bait. You'll see the bait. You'll see the bait. It'll be like little swirls in the bottom. You just set up on that and drift over it. Same do thing. Ever, do you fish with whole squids when you're out there? I'll do that. So I didn't talk about that at all. Um, I don't like fishing. The question was, do I ever fish with a whole squid? Right? The, the whole big bait concept and all. I'll do it just if I like really want to take a shot at Slammer at Slammer Fluke. And I know sea bass are not around. I'll fish like a uh, a fish finder rig with two hooks, one through the like the the top of the squid and one right between the eyes of the squid. That that's a trailing one. The reason why I don't like fishing with whole squid that much is because the sea bass love it. They come, they bite the bait in half, and it's like the bait's in the water for like, I don't know, 10 seconds. You feel it, chop, chop, and it's over. Well, the bait's in half, and then it's like spinning like this, and nothing happens, it's over. Right, that's why I don't do it that much. That's why I like that high-low rig. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of chances to it, and there's a lot of forgiveness, you know? So, any other any other questions? Thank you very much. You know, oh, that's another thing, man. Again, 
like fishing with like live bait, I'll get to you in one second. Um, fishing with live baits, like all oh, bunker live snappers, this and that. I don't know, man, the sea bass hit it, it gets chopped in half, and it's just a lot of pain in the ass for not a lot. Like the people catch fish, sure, but would I have caught that big fish on, on a high-low rig? Probably. You know, I, I, like a big profile, like I'll use a big profile, I'll use like a bait this big. Right, if I'm like a real, like I know there's trophies there, I'm like, oh man, we're, you know, we're like getting solid four or five pound fish. I'm fishing stuff this big. Like you'll see it, man. And the fish like all kind of gather together, but they're small, they're stacked. They're stacked. It's not like a whole piece. They're like right, they're like as long from here to here. That's the bite. Literally from here to here. That's the bite. And as wide as the table. And sometimes maybe it's half of that. Right? And you're in 70 feet of water. That's how you do it. You can do that. You can anchor and you can flip a bucktail out and work it. Um, typically, I don't because certainly in um, deeper water, I'm going to spend a ton of time trying to get over such a small area. Right? I don't want to like deal with that. And then if it's off, it's like, oh crap, I gotta pick everything up. I just blew a half an hour for nothing in prime time. I can spin my boat and get my boat in this little area as many times as I want to. That's what, you know, that's where the boat handling comes in. First, you gotta know where the fish are. I located the fish, I hit that waypoint. Dumb luck, it's fine, man. You're in a productive area, it's not dumb. I'm in an area, find your little spot in the area, boom, this is where they are, waypoint. Okay, Let me, I wanna hit that waypoint, man. And there's times, I might even adjust, I might bump the boat a little bit. Like, oh crap, just bump it up a little bit. Just to go right over, right over that waypoint. You just gotta pay attention not to spin your boat. You spin, I, listen, I'm not perfect. There's times that I've spun the boat, I hear DJ in the back melting at me because everybody's lines twisted. <laughs> you know, and this is one of the few times that I'll allow my son to melt at me because he's gotta clean it up, right? But that's, you know, that's the story. You had a question. Question, now, you're drifting, you, you get a hit. Until the bike goes dead. Right. So you follow it for a couple of minutes. I'll go for a couple of little while, right? I'll go for a little while, see if there's anything else. Because what I'll do when I'm drifting is I want to try to hit multiple waypoints if I can. Right. Right. So that's not just one waypoint. You know, I'll, I'll I happen to know what I was fishing on there, and you know the area had a couple of little productive pieces in there, and I had a, you know the, everything was lined up that day. But that's why always when you catch a fish, waypoint, 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 waypoint. And then when you're drifting, I just try to aim waypoints. Let me just try to like go over as many waypoints as I can. That's a great trip. That's the way to like to limit your boat, right? You, if I had a fish here one day, likely I'm gonna have it another day. If I'm in the area and it's better than fishing over nothing, like aiming for nothing, right? So that's that. All right, any other, any other questions or? you ever use peanuts for bait? I talked about that. I don't like to. First of all, yeah, they die really quickly. If they're dead, they spin, and the sea bass whack them in half, and they're good for nothing. They're a waste. All right? Other people swear by them. More power to you. Good for you. It works for you. That's great. Awesome. And your bites are usually after structure, right? After you drift over the structure. Oh, they may be in front of the structure. Depends. You get them in front of Yeah, you get them everywhere. The fish, they're setting up How around the structure. How structure do you usually pick them up? I'm, they could be like really far off the structure yeah. because there could so be there rubble, a... like the big structure, there could be like rubble after yeah. the structure that you don't see. Like it'll come like it's like really, you know, like yeah. whatever. Just continue your drift for a little while. The first time you do it, continue your drift, see if there's any anything else going on. If there's nothing going on, you know you got a really short drift in. If you're picking up fish the whole way, beautiful. But that's the line that you want to take. You want to be fishing over productive bottom. Don't drift and dream and hope. Does the tide I, I, matter? I, I, hold up one, one sec. I'm sorry. Talking to some of the divers, they always seem to say the fish are laying on the lee side of the current on a wreck. They can. The fluke that will set up, I, man, like I'm all, you know, there's most of the, you know, there's most of the time that may be true, but, but if I'm fluke fishing, so what? It's not like I have to, like, I'll still give it a shot on the front side of it. Right, and these are fluke. They may like set up. You know, the water does that in front of the front of the piece too, as well. They may like lay in there. You ever see the videos? They're just like kind of hanging out, like kind of like swimming around, 
and they'll follow your bait for a long time too. You know, who knows? I just drifted. Here's a piece. I drift the front of it, the side of it, the front of it, the back of it. One side, the other side. Yep. And I'm just continually moving it, and I'm using my I'm using my uh, my tracks to see how I need to move you the boat. Straight up and down, always with your your lines. Always. So I drift sometimes, and you scope out a ways. As you're gonna get hung up, piece, man. I guess so. I still, you're still when you're doing this though. Because the thing is, if you're high scope and you're doing this, you're not doing anything. It's just going like that along the bottom instead of up and down like that. Right? You're too light. If you're scoping out, you, you got to put more more weight on it. So when you're out on a reef, you're using what? Six ounces? No, I use three to five. I'm only, you know, like this is all like light, light stuff and I'm not, I'm, you know, the boat doesn't sail. Yeah. You know? Yeah, use like a sea anchor to anchors. slow your boat down or charter me. <laughs> Maybe. So, I'm kidding. That's a shameless plug, but I'm <laughs> shameless, all right. I mean, yeah, to be clear, yes, I, re I recognize it's a shameless plug, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking it's with you right. guys. But uh, what else we got? Any other questions? Does the, does the period of the tide matter when you're out in 40 feet of water, 50 feet of water? Sure. It does? It does. It could. Uh, your next question, I don't have you the think answer to. it has to. an effect on what this gentleman said about the uh, fish tend to be on the lee side? Uh, you know, Sometimes so it's you're the asking. And the so the thing is, there's so many variables that are I in know. there. You got wind, you got tide, you got bait, you got what's happening underneath the water. Right. So again, there's no there. I've got a piece. I know the piece has been productive for me. I'm gonna fish front side, back side, left and right. Anybody home today? They're not. I'm out of here. I'm moving. Right, boom, move, 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 move. Found them, hammer the crap out of them. Okay, I've taken every one of their family home for dinner. Yeah. Next piece. Okay. Move, 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 fish, move, fish, move, fish, move, fish, move. That's that's what my day looks like. You're in the bay, more ideal conditions. Did you say outgoing tide or incoming? It depends. You like it, again, to to out. outside of outside of outside of um. May when it's cold. As soon as that water hits sixty degrees, man, just fish. You know, if you're married, girlfriend, whatever, kids, whatever. Whenever they say, okay, or you say, hey, I'm gonna be home late from work. Uh, got hung, and you go to the boat after work. Whatever, that's the tide you're fishing. You know, I don't recommend doing that because you get caught. You know, and it's like no fun. Again, no, I care. Well, I care what my wife thinks. To be honest, yeah. But um, the um, if you've got kids or grandkids, all right. Not only is it awesome that they fish with you, but it also I have found out is a total free pass. And even more than that, you look like a superstar fishing. Imagine looking like a superstar fishing. Like I've got like some some of these pictures of my kids. Some of the, these are uh, are our uh, charter. That's a charter. Oh, this is my son doing our boat. I didn't even talk about this. This is the boat. We ripped the boat down to the studs. That's the way it looked. That's my son who's going to SUNY Maritime in September. Um, this is actually how he found out he wanted to go to SUNY Maritime. You never know like where it's going to come from. He like built the whole boat with me. He's like, that was a lot of fun. I'm like, you're really good at it. So he's going to he's going to do uh, he's going to be an engineer. Uh, so he's going to go there for us. My wife actually actually this is the day I lost my rod. Uh, <laughs> it's the exact day. This is the fish that we were on that day. Um, you don't see me smiling though because I was like totally pissed off that I had lost. This is a charter, uh, charter. Um, that's my daughter. We talked about her. This is a charter. This is my son. That's the mate. Um, let's see what else we got. Another charter. That's a charter guy. Another charter guy. These are all fish locally caught again. Those are slammer fish. I mean, this is what we do. This is what we do every day in August. Um, that's my dad over there. It's all about legacy, you know, having a good time fishing. You know, my kids are actually the rest of these are that's my those are some striped bass slides. But all right, cool. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Hey, thanks for uh thanks for coming, guys. I like to thank that. Yeah.